Well, hi all my friends. I hope you had a great uh, weekend celebrating the Lord's conception. And uh, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> um, and uh, good time with family and friends and whatnot. Um, and um, so I did. I had just enjoyed myself very much. Um, we did a little birthday candle for the Lord and um, stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to uh, get into reading 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8. Um, I wanted to say that there was a very important um, general that was on the plane that crashed, uh, the Ru Russian plane that cr crashed today, um, that was going to be um, um, a Russian general. Um, <clears throat> um, there's a lot of troop activity going on in uh, Aleppo and um, surrounding Syria. And people are saying that um, it could very well could be Turkey wanting to take over that area. Um, so there's, you know, wars and rumors of war still going on. And um, so I just wanted to be let you be apprised of that. Um, uh, prayers go out to families who lost loved ones on that plane. There was 92 souls on board. Um, plane went down in uh, off of Crimea, uh, that area in Europe. I'm I'm not really familiar with it. Um, so anyway, um, let's keep praying for uh, President-elect Trump that everything goes well for him and his administration and for our country, um, and uh, that we have a happy New Year. So okay. Chapter 8, by the occasion of the ill government of Samuel's sons, the Israelites ask a, ki the Israelites ask a king. Samuel describes how the king would rule over them. Now, it came to pass that when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. So there's still judges, there's not yet a king. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abid, oh gosh, Abiha, A B I H A. And they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after liqueur, and took bribes and perverted judgment. So. Yeah, greed, bribery, so forth, injustices. And when all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and they said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy way. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing that displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherein they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, albeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people, and asked of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that, <clears throat> shall reign over you. He shall take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. 
He will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take a tenth of your seed and of your vineyard and give to his officers and to his servants. He will take your manservants and your maidservants and your godliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep and he will, and yet shall he be his servants. And ye shall cry out in the day because of your king which you have chosen you and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. And they said, May be all the nations. We want to be like all the nations. And our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in his, the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man into his city. So basically, go back home. Chapter 9. Saul disparagingly finds his father's asses, comes to Samuel. God reveals to Samuel Saul's coming and his appointment to the kingdom. Now, there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, son of Abiel, the son of Zakor, the son of Bechorath, the son of Aphilha, a Benjaminite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul a choice young man, a godly, therefore not among the children of Israel, a godlier person than he, and his shoulders and upwards, he was higher than any of the, of the people. So he's very tall. And the asses of, uh, of Kishal's father were lost. And Kish said to, his, to, son, to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee, arise and go seek the asses. <clears throat> And he, and he passed through Mount Ephraim, passed through the land of Shia and found them not. And then he passed through the land of Shalim, and they were not there, and passed through the land of the Benjamites, and they found them not. And when they came to the land of Zup, Saul said to a servant that was with him, Come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us and start worrying about them. And he said unto them, Behold now, there is in the city a man of God, and he is an honorable man, and all he saith comes surely to pass. Now let us go thither, and preadventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servants, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For bread is spent in our, our vessels, there's not a a present to bring to the man of God. What, what have we? And the servants answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give to the man of God to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. For he, um, he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. And Paul and Saul said to his servant, Well, Will said, Come, let us go. So they went into the city where the man of God was. And as they went up to the hill to the city, found the young maidens going out to draw water, and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them, uh, and said, He is, behold, he is before you. Make haste now, uh, for he come, 
today to the city, and there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. And soon you shall come into the city and shall straightway find him, for he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because he does bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that is bidden. Now therefore get you up, and about this time you shall find him. And they went up to the city, and when they come into the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for it, for to go up to the high place. And the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul come, saying, Tomorrow about this time I shall send thee a man out to the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked up upon my people, because their cry is coming to me. And when Samuel saw Saul, and the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake of thee, uh, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where is the seer's house is? And the Samuel answered Saul, and said, I am the seer. Go up uh, before me into the high place, and you shall eat with me today and tomorrow, and I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? It is not on thee, and on all of thy father's house. And Saul answered and said, Am I, am not I a Benjamite, the smallest of the tribes of Israel, my family the least of all, the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? And Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, that which were thirty persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold that which is left, set it before thee, and eat. For unto this time hath it been kept for, the, kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they came down from the high place unto the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servants pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We'll continue uh, later this week, tomorrow, and uh, continue to see what God is going to show to Saul through Samuel. All right, well, I hope you have a great week, and um, happy Boxing Day. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>